Hey, what's up guys? Cotton here. And I wanted to bring you like a let's get started video because a lot of people ask me like I just installed. What do I do? It's a bit overwhelming and there is a lot to look at, but let's just get into it. So first you have your main interface here. Now I want you to notice first on the left your ribbons. This just shows you your progress, okay? Ribbons are earned by almost everything you do in the game, from shooting different kinds of weapons, to running, to crouching, capturing things, destroying things. Now, leveling up these ribbons unlocks future weapons you can buy in the store, upgrades, um, some of these unlock vehicles. These are just like a progress of everything you do in the game, because almost everything you do is tracked and there's some kind of progress on it. So that's briefly what ribbons do, but ribbons also unlock your badges. Now your badges are like combat perks that you can equip to make certain aspects of your character better. Maybe you want to run faster, bring more ammo, do more explosive damage, that's what these are. Now when you first start out, you're only going to have one badge slot. I have two because I have veteran membership. I play a lot so it's worth it to me to have veteran, I think it's like $10 a month and you get added you know experience and money and all that but that's another thing you don't need that when you're starting out obviously okay now I want to bring you down here to the experience bar this center bar see right here you start as an infantryman you start at level zero nothing and as you level up you'll unlock future jobs as you get to these little branches that break off Level 3 is tank, level 4 you can become a pilot, level 7 you can be a paratrooper, and level 9 you can become a recon. And if somehow you make it all the way to level 18, you can become a general. A general is a very important decision to make as it converts your character into the war aspect of the game only. You can't use him in game no more. All of his badges and perks that have been earned are converted to make his assault team stronger, which we'll get over a little later. You don't have to worry about that now. Now gaining experience and leveling up won't just unlock more classes for you, but it will also unlock uh, vehicles, weapons, things like that occasionally, similar to the way earning the ribbons do, as you'll find out as you go along. Again, when you're starting out, don't worry about none of this. You'll slowly get into the game and how things unlock and come at you. So on your right over here is your weapons. Starting out, you get the starting uh, semi-automatic assault rifle for whatever your faction is. On the Axis, it's the G43. On the Allies, it's the M1 Grand. And both get their faction starting grenades. As you level up and purchase more things, you click the plus sign here. You can change out gear, unequip gear by using these. This is also where you go to modify your weapons. As you use the weapon, you will level it up and you can unlock modifiers. You can do things like unlock different triggers, barrels, sights. All this is geared to just change the functionality of the gun. Maybe it'll increase some damage, but you might lose some stability or increase the range, but lose some rate of fire. It lets you kind of build the weapon the way you want to build it, which is nice. Okay, now if you look at your weapons here, there's different tabs. You can scroll to the vehicle tab. Here's where you'll get your vehicles. The top slot is your car or your Jeep. If you're Axis, you get a car. If you're American, you get a Jeep. You have to be level two to unlock this, and you start at level zero, so that's it's not that's maybe five, six matches. You'll get it. The next vehicle is a motorcycle you can earn. Now this is earned by being a driver. The driver ribbon right here, you see seventh grade required. You get it just for driving. You get it for driving any kind of car. There's also civilian trucks you can find on the battlefield. You can drive those and you can steal enemy vehicles if you happen to pop them out of it or just find one. You walk up and hold E on it. You'll lockpick it and steal it. Now, just the simple act of driving, it measures your distance per match and it gives you experience to your driver ribbon. Once you're up to level 7, you get a motorcycle. The Axis get the R75 with a sidecar machine gun. And the Americans, theirs is only a two-seater, no machine gun, but it's a little bit faster, much more versatile. 
And now this third vehicle is an APC, an armored personnel carrier. You get this by being the chauffeur, fifth grade. Basically, anybody who rides in a car with you, anybody who hops in as a passenger, whether it be car, truck, motorcycle, it all counts toward your chauffeur rank. And it's really easy to get, actually. I make a common practice when I spawn and I have a car. I'll honk my horn using left click and try to get other people to hop in the car with me, ride to the point with me, so that way I get the chauffeur points and I get more people to the point, so everybody wins. The APCs are very similar for the Axis and Allies. Um, they have a mounted machine gun on top that one of the passengers can fire. The driver, while you're driving, if you hold control and duck down, you can close the little hatches in front of you and it'll help block bullets, but it's very hard to see, so there's a give and take. But these are also, they count as mobile spawn points. Wherever these are parked on the map, anybody can switch over and join that infantry team. It'll be called the mechanized infantry team, and they can spawn inside the car, or the APC rather. It's kind of like a car, big RV. But it's a mobile spawn point, it's armored pretty well, it'll take at least two tank shells, maybe three to take it down. And the machine gun on top is very useful. Uh, it's usually good practice, park it around the back of a building or something, park it out of sight, that way you can keep flooding your team into an area without it being blown up or stolen or something. And now this third tab over here, the assault teams. This is something a lot of people kind of panic on, because this ties into the general side of the game. This is something you do not need to worry about until you're level 12 and you can actually participate in it. By then you'll know a lot more about the game, what it's about, how to use it, but I'll go over it a little bit. Once you're level 12, for whatever corresponding character you have, you can form an assault team for them. Like if you have recon, you can have a, a squad of recons you can send out into the battle. That's this general side of the map right here when you tab over. Once the map loads, it'll finish saying uploading war data and you'll see all the, the different nodes of the cities, uh, what roads each faction owns, and where you can send. You know, I think a lot of people when they hear RTS in the game, they think they're going to be playing Command and Conquer or StarCraft or something. It's not like that. This is it right here. It is a digital map of Europe. Where you can see who owns what now since i'm axis my colors show up as blue and we own more of the map right now the first team to capture 12 major cities on the map wins the war the war will then end a new war will begin you can choose a new faction that you want to reinforce with your assault teams choosing a faction if it comes up again it doesn't matter till you're level 12. so if you zoom into the map where the colors collide here, you'll see towns on fire. That's an area of active conflict. If you double click that area, you can queue for the battle. Uh, again, this is all stuff I wouldn't worry about when you're first getting started. I'll go over queuing a bit later. All right, so back on our main tab here. Now up in the top left is our money. Now credits and war funds and gold alike are earned in game. Credits are earned every match, and how you get them is really hard, because you get them for a little bit of everything you do. Every tank you blow up, every point you capture, every kill you get, you'll earn some kind of an experience and a payout for that. Plus, you'll get your soldier salary for completing the battle. As you level up, each level gets paid a certain amount of money. If you click your bar, you can see it. Your basic rank 1, his salary is 1,150 credits per battle versus let's say you get up to level 10 maybe you'll get 2500 credits per battle on top of everything else you earned while you d were in the battle everything you did every point you captured every point you defended just every little action impacts how much money and experience you earn in the battle and now we'll go down to war funds these are also earned in the game. Now these are used for everything to do with the general side of the game. Purchasing your assault teams, uh, reinforcing your assault teams if they get knocked out, they need to get refilled so they can get back on the field, things of that nature. Again, don't really have to worry about these till level 12 and by then you should have a good amount banked up to where you can start your own little small army. So just keep that in mind. 
And now gold. Gold is the premium currency in the game, can be bought with real world money, as well as anything in the game can be bought with the money if you want to avoid the grind. You'll slowly earn the money, as you see right here at the bottom left, first battle of the day bonus, four gold. You'll get four gold a day. It's not a lot, but it'll trickle in after a while. You can buy things like ribbon boosters to level up weapons and things of that nature faster. They're pretty cheap, maybe 50 gold for one. Or gold is also used to buy the veteran membership that I have, which doubles your XP and it gives you about 50% more credits earned per battle, as well as giving you a 25% boost on your ribbons, which is nice. When you're someone like me who plays a lot, it's just worth it. So if we look down to the bottom left, you'll see a series of buttons. The first one you saw me already click. It shows you when you earn, it's your notifications, when you earn your gold, and it also shows you how much your repair costs were after every battle, just in case you're curious. The second tab over is the global chat. You'll see everybody who's on, all the different channels. You can chat with people here. Uh, I can't really read Russian, so I won't attempt. Next is your messages, your personal in-game mail you can receive. Next is your friends tab, which yeah, I have a lot of messages here. Your friends tab. Now, I want to go over this with you real quick because adding friends is a little tricky. People have had a problem with this. You want to click the plus button. Type in your friend's name. It doesn't, you know, just however his name is, just John Smith. You're going to want to hit enter. Once you hit enter, it doesn't say that anywhere, but you have to hit it, this list will pop up. You click the check mark of the name. Now, there might be multiples like this, so try to find your friend's exact type name. Once you click the box, then you hit add friends, and it will go over to your list. You have added your friend. Your friend must also add you to be able to see you and queue together, as well as message together. Adding him isn't enough. You have to add each other, so keep that in mind. And now the final button down here, the squad button. This is how you team up with your friends. You hit that, hit create squad, pick your faction of course. Um, right now I'm currently fighting for Germany so I'll pick that. And now you pick what kind of team you want to form. Guard teams are just like they sound, they're basic guard units. Um, they don't spawn in as regular infantry. Guards can only ride motorcycles or you know take other vehicles. And there's a maximum of three players to the guard. Infantry is a squad of six. Infantry are your basic infantry units, just similar to guard, but they can also use um, the cars, the jeeps, things like that. Better to queue as infantry. Um, queuing as guard is it just might get you into the battle faster, being a smaller group. Uh, of course, recon, a three-man recon squad can come together. Paratroopers can roll in groups of six. Tank crews can have up to three people in the party. And keep in mind when queuing together as a tank crew, uh, the battle might not necessarily have, like, let's say, light, medium, and heavy tanks. It might only have medium tanks. So everybody needs to make sure they have a medium tank. Or generally, you're all going to queue together as a light armor. You're going to see more light tank squads than anything. So just a future note, if you're trying to queue up with, like, a heavy tank with a light tank, you might have some trouble unless that particular battlefield has both those assault teams. And the fighter squadron. You can party up to groups of four. And uh, nothing else really to that one. Everybody has the same planes. When you change your class over to pilot, he comes with a plane. It only costs about 20 grand to convert the infantry to pilot. So that's something to keep in mind. As well as the tanks, when you first convert to the uh, tanker, the first light tank, I believe, is supplied for you. Okay, now in the bottom right here, which I don't know if you can see, my camera might be in the way, but there's a little portrait of two people. You can click that. It brings up your soldier menu. This is where you can see all of your soldiers, maybe if you want to buy a new one. You can also go here to rename your soldiers. And just a good overhaul, you can see something I highly recommend is your first starting character, he's going to be your bread and butter. He's going to be the big money maker. Leave him as infantry, and anything else you want to do, specialized like tanks or pilots, buy a separate soldier, level him to three or four, whatever it needs to drive, 
make him his own dedicated driver because you always want to keep an infantry in your back pocket because they have the least um, repair costs and they just tend to make the most money out of any of your classes. They spend less money, you know, there's, like I said, there's not much repairs, it's just keep a good infantry in your pocket, usually the first one you start on each faction. Level other specialty classes separately, it might suck, but you're gonna find it sucks more constantly switching your, your infantry to tanker and then to pilot and then back to infantry. It's nice to have each character ready to go. You can switch in battle and it's not a big problem. So again, keep your main starting soldiers infantry. Make sure you get them a decent gun, take care of them. They're going to be your big money maker. So that about takes care of the overall, you know, heads up display here. And most of this is just information that's shown. So now you're ready to queue, right? Well, before you queue, I highly recommend you do the training mission called First Blood. If it didn't automatically pop up for you or if you accidentally closed it, if you go up to the top right, there's a little, I guess it's a guy in a hat, but it kind of looks like a, a ghost trying to give me a hug. But you click that and you can enter the First Blood. The reason I say do First Blood right off the bat, obviously because it's the training tutorial it's not that long when you first join it hit escape go to your options make sure you, that your video resolution is set to your monitor otherwise the game looks insane it looks like it was made 100 years ago and by completing this training tutorial you will earn your first badge which I will show you is right here the first blood badge you can equip it lets you run 15% longer or further however you want to say it but 15% more stamina can make a difference. Eventually you will unlock this badge called Marathon Man. It also starts at 15% but then you can level it two more times. This is leveled just by running or riding bicycles. Anything you do physical, you'll be leveling that. As similar with other badges, getting shot, driver. So after you've done your training and you have your first badge equipped, which I didn't do the training yet, this is a horrible example, right? You're ready to queue up. So you hit enter combat. Now I believe when you first start out, until you hit level 3, you are restricted to stage battles and you are restricted to only the skirmish modes. But this is not a bad thing, this is actually a very good thing that a lot of people don't realize. Skirmishes are the fast maps, they're very small. They also get the best frames per second if your computer is having trouble running the game, okay? So keep that in mind. Once you're level 3, you can queue for the bigger assault maps like the factory, the airfield. These maps are a bit more computer intensive, but they're also a lot larger. They last longer. They're about a uh, half hour to an hour usually, whereas a skirmish is anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes depending on the flow of the battle. And if you're just starting, I highly recommend sticking to skirmishes, even past level 3. Skirmishes, they take less time, but they'll earn you more money in the long run versus spending an hour on the bridge. You'll make almost the same amount of money in 20 minutes of a skirmish. So when you're just starting out and you're itching for money and experience, a good way to get that is to stick to skirmish maps. You'll go up here, pick whatever your character is. If you want to queue with multiple characters, that's fine. I personally only pick one at a time. I usually have a, a set thing in my head I want to do. Pick your character, pick your maps, find battle. Now, I need to explain to you the difference here. The stage battles are generated by the server. They, they try to at least be fair. They try to give each side a squad of tanks, a squad of planes, you know, evenly matched infantry, this and that. Whereas the war battles you can queue for Winning and losing these actually affects the war, the general side of the game. But these battles, like it says right here, they may be unpredictable. Because it all depends on how they've been reinforced. You could come to a battle that has 50 squads of tanks versus a couple of guys on bicycles. It won't ever be that bad, I'm just saying. It could be nutty. One faction could have planes while the other faction could have tanks. I mean, it won't always be balanced. You might get frustrated being infantry up against only tanks. So definitely stick to the stage battles until you really get your grip on the game. Maybe once you party up with friends, that's the time to go to war battle, try to have some fun, maybe try to, you know, queue and take Paris all by yourselves. You know, it, it can be a lot of fun. But when you're starting out, war servers are suicide. I would really stick to stage battles. 
Stick to skirmish until you get your first few weapons, your first car. You'll be, have a lot better grasp on the game. You'll be ready for the bigger maps because you'll have your car. You'll be more mobile. Alright guys, so now we're in game. And these nodes that are lit up like this with the crosses, you can spawn there. The other points are points that can be contested. As you can see, these two blue ones mean that my team owns them. This other team owns the red one. If they're grayed out, they're neutral. Nobody owns them. So you click on your spawn. If you have a vehicle and your assault team down here has vehicles available, you might be able to spawn with it if too many aren't already on the field. Otherwise, spawn on foot. And now you're in the game and you're thinking, holy Jesus. But really? Hit um, escape. Go to your input settings and just take a minute to learn the keys. Maybe even rebind a few because I know some that I didn't like when I first started playing. And once you get the hang of it, a few things to know. F you can whistle with and people might stop and give you a ride. Or everywhere you spawn, bicycles will be there. It doesn't matter where it is on the base. Like if you spawn anywhere, there's going to be a bike at that spawn point somewhere. If it's not there, wait a minute, it'll spawn back. Bicycles are the cheapest free way to get around. Um, hold shift naturally it, as that's your turbo button and you can go a bit faster with it. He'll stand up versus you see him regular riding. This is one of the civilian trucks that also will be parked in spawn. Um, they'll respawn slowly throughout the map, but these are pretty fun to drive. I like to run people over with them, and it's a quick way to level up your driving badge if you don't have a car yet. So, yeah, once you find a way into battle, there's not much else to it. You can see all the points. If it's blue and nothing going on there, you're good. But if it's blue and you see a meter, that means it's being contested. Like somebody's trying to take it or your team's taking it back. So, your first mission is just try to capture points. Watch out for enemies. I'm going to drive over here to see, see what I can do. Never mind, I got blown up by a landmine. That will happen. <laughs> As I said before, you'll start with your semi-automatic rifle and your hand grenades. You can cycle these with the mouse wheel or one and two. Right click is your aim, left click will fire. Um, I recommend if you're in really close range with these weapons, you can hip fire. They're pretty accurate, and at least if they're in front of you, better chance. If not, if you like to aim down the sights, use it all the time. It's definitely more accurate. So you can shoot through that window if you want. These guns aren't bad just because they're starter weapons. They just take some time to get used to. Usually it's... Uh, two shots to the body to kill with these factory standards. Sometimes three. You might be nicking an arm or a leg or something. Alright, let's move on to hand grenades here. A lot of killing power in these. Left click is what's going to be your trigger to throw them. If you hold it, you can increase the throw distance. You know, it kind of winds it back a bit. Left click to release. Make sure that you don't drop it too close to yourself as it will hurt. You can quickly just tap it just to get rid of it. Maybe chuck it in a doorway like that. See, even then, I was a little close to the blast. I took a little bit of damage. But you'll see my health in the bottom regenerated. If, if, if the damage you take isn't that bad, like you get shot in your toe or something and nothing more, you'll regenerate that. But if you get hurt bad enough, you won't see grayed out bars. Just the number of white bars you have will be limited. Which can also be refilled. You'll find health stations. Press your map key to see the battle. And if you right click on the map, it will zoom in and you can see yellow crates on the ground. Like this one, I believe, is a Panzerfaust crate. Yep. These are for free. They're just laying around the battlefield. You can aim them up. Spacebar is how you can modify your zoom. Like let's say you want to aim farther away. Hit spacebar, it'll range it for you. Fire. Well guys, uh, that's about all I have for right now. I'm sure I missed about a hundred things, but really, a lot of people, they come to me, they're like, oh my god, what do I do? It's so overwhelming. Just play the game. Have fun. It's a really fun game when you get into it. It's a little discouraging at first, once you learn the controls, once you learn to take cover and not get blown up by tanks a lot. It's a really fun game. 
and you'll learn all the, the tricky craziness as you go. Again, don't worry about the war and the factions and the assault teams. That's all level 12 and up. Right now, you're just going to worry about getting your bearings, getting your first few weapons, first few cars, and have fun. That's what the game's about. It's a really fun game. That's why I play it every day. I have loads of laughs on this game. But I hope all this helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask me in the comments. Um, I don't know if you're new here, but I try to answer every comment that I get. It's a little time consuming, but I like the feedback. I like interacting with everybody. So please, drop me a line if you need anything, any comments. And I'm just curious to know, what kind of guide would you guys want to see next? You know, I've gotten some requests for paratrooper. People keep asking me for tanks. I'm not really into tanks. I swear I'm getting there soon. I even made the new character that was the one in this video. He'll be my tank driver for Axis. But let me know what you guys want to see next, you know. Give me some ideas here. But hey, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.